August 9, 2022. First order of business, approval of the minutes. Recommended action, approval of the July 12, 2022 Education Committee meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Mary? I don't see her. I don't, I don't see her on Zoom. Yes, yeah, she's on Zoom. Oh, there she is. Mary, are you, uh, can you hear us? Here she goes. Excuse me, Mike, do you have communication with Mary? We're approving the minutes, um, approval of the minutes, uh, motion. Becky, you want to read motion? Motion. Can you second, Mary? I'm trying to. Okay, you you're good, we hear you. Okay. <laughs> Can you say second? Second. Thank you. Um, call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. A, we have a presentation this evening from Evolve Individual Services Intensive Behavioral Health Services. And who is presenting? Becky, you coming up? Come on down. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, hi, we are Evolve Individual Services, um, a mental health agency out of Coatesville, Pennsylvania. We have been active prior to COVID, but when COVID hit, we kind of had to pump the brakes a little bit, but we have been up and running since April. I am one of the owners, Juanita Baxter. And I am Kyara Marlowe. Um, we're both natives of Coatesville. We're very excited to be here. Um, and just, you know, take on the opportunity to collaborate and hopefully provide a more productive learning environment. Thank you. So do we have any questions before we get started or can we go ahead and jump in? Sure, get started. All right, so Evolve Individual Services. So we have a particular service that we provide which is called Intensive Behavioral Health Services. Some of you may know of it from like your wraparound services. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much the same service, it's just that the language has changed um, since 2020. So our foundation, our mission is to provide families and individuals with counseling and mental health services to improve their quality of life. Our vision is to help individuals evolve by learning skills and interventions to enhance their overall well-being. So as I stated before, area of specialty is we specialize in intensive behavioral health services for children and adolescents. Our age um, criteria is we take um, clients as young as four and we can go all the way up until 21 um, of age. So what is IBHS? So intensive behavioral health services provide support to children and adolescents with mental, emotional, and behavioral health needs under the age of 21. IBHS offers an array of services that meet the need of these individuals in their home, school, and community. So underneath <coughs> IBHS, there are two separate um, entities. You have individualized services and then you also have ABA services. We specialize in the individual services. Underneath that, you have three services that you can receive from a licensed clinician, which includes a behavioral specialist that can go into the home, school, and community that works along with the parent, medical doctors, and the teacher, as well as the client being the center of the treatment. You also have a mobile therapist, which th um, they provide individual therapeutic services in the home setting or community setting. That um, service does not take place in school, 
And then we have what is called a DHT. That is a behavior health technician. So some people get confused with this service. It's not a PCA. So with the BHT, they focus on the behavior. So they um, basically follow the treatment plan of the behavioral consultant. So if the goal is to increase compliance in the educating, education setting, the BSC will come in a couple of hours a week, um, model for the teacher, implement the strategies to the BHT, and transfer skills. The goal is not to keep the BHT for years, but be able to transfer the skills to the student, to the teacher, to the family for the child to be successful. We also offer group services. These group services can occur in school and they can occur in our office as well. Our goal while working with the district. First, we wanna be able to provide mental health in children, adolescents, and the personnel of Coastal Area Senior School District and families. Secondly, we want to provide prevention, early recognition, and intervention strategies in primary care settings. Third, we'd like to encourage partnerships and collaboration between educational professionals, families, and communities. Implementation guide. Ensuring mental health services are accessible, continuity of care, training, cultural competence, attitudes about mental health, coordination and referral. Areas of focus for the student. Self, how children and adolescents see themselves. As far as the family, how children relate to family members and function at home. Friends, how children socialize with peers and friends. And then the community, how children function within their community. And then the school setting, how children function within the academic setting. <laughs> Providing a bridge, <laughs> potential interventions, suggested tools and methods for assessment, guidelines for crisis stabilization, interventions that may be implemented at the problem stage before more severe disorders develop, strategies for primary care management of the mental health problem or mental disorder, when to consider a mental health referral, the types of referral services to be considered, ongoing collaboration with mental health professionals and other service <coughs> providers, and further resources and references. So the next stage will be strengthen strengthening the family's mental health toolkit because the idea is that the service is not in place for an extremely long time. So average turnaround of the service is anywhere from six months to a year and a half. So during this time, we wanna be able to have appropriate screening measures and questionnaires, provide a resource list, have interactive handouts, forms to facilitate communication with schools, and psychoeducation on mental health diagnoses and strategies. So this is our belief system. EIS believes maintaining your mental health is vital to living not only a happy life or a healthier life. Our desire is to see our clients thrive in the heart of our treatment model. Providing a service that increases individuals' quality of life can also positively impact the community. So I know a large concern is, well, who is gonna fund <laughs> these services? We have several contracts with insurance companies um, through medical assistance, which a large portion of the population in Coatesville has. So that can be from Aetna Better, Better Health, United Healthcare, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Each insurance company has a Medicaid portion, and we also have two contracts that are pending with commercial insurance for Aetna and um, Independence Blue Cross Blue Shield. The way the service works is currently we do not have a waiting list, which is surprising. Um, and we are the only um, community-based IBHS service in Coatesville area right now. So let's say if you have a student that's struggling in school, you would refer him to our agency. He would then, he or she would then meet with our psychologist within 24 to 48 hours. 
and from there they would be assigned a clinician and they would begin treatment. Are there any questions? I have a couple of questions for you. Yes. So you said that you don't have a waiting list, which is fantastic because I do know that um, most of the providers do. Um, so how many um, clinicians do you have on staff? Like how many students can you see? So right now we have four clinicians on staff and two BHTs that are staff. We also have a psychologist and an LPC. Um, currently, no one's caseload is full. Um, so we are getting some of the spill, spillover for, like you would say, like a child guidance mm -hmm. because they closed down their IBHS program on June 30th. Um, what we really wanted to do was have new faces in the program and not typically have so many people that have been in this service for five and six years because you have been given the skills, everything that we can give you. So having new clientele come in that may be struggling, like I said, in the school or the home and having that cl um, collaboration piece as to where you guys really can't go into the home, but we can. So we may be able to see the client at school, but then we also follow up with the parent to make sure that they're following the interventions, making sure that they're <laughs> understanding expectations at school, make, making sure that they're responding to emails um, from the teachers and kind of being the bridge between home and school. So you, you, you are able to um, accept medical assistance? Yes, so uh, we do accept medical assistance. So what we learned through this process is that every insurance company has a Medicaid portion and we have contracts with every Medicaid portion for Chester County. So my next question is, and I know you're here in Coatesville, um, but I also work with a all of Chester County, so are you just focusing in on Coatesville? I'm not trying to take any breath away, but I, I just know a lot of families that are, are on wait lists that have been on wait lists for over a year. So are you eventually um, branching out to accept other families? So we are currently accepting um, other families, um, and they're able to go onto our website, www. Um, EvolveIBHS.org, we make it very black and white how to sign up and um, engage us for services. If you go on and click on the tab, Get Help Now, you're able to complete a short referral, put in the type of insurance that you have, and we contact you back within 24 hours. Um, I think why we focused in on Coatesville first is because we're both graduates of Coatesville Area School District, and we have a heart for the school and just already working within different buildings and seeing the need, um, it, it was like a no-brainer for us to see where do, where do we start at first. So we kind of want to plan our roots here with, with our home school district. So, so your role in our district will, will be, I guess, how, how is this going to work? Like are we, ref will like Brenda or the supervisors, right? when they know they have a family in need, will they refer them to you? Um, and then if they require the community-based services, then obviously someone would come into the um, district with them. Is that kind of what it's looking at? Or are you saying that you're going to be in our building all the time? Like I know Child Guidance used to do up at Twin Valley. They would have somebody in office that would be able to work with the kids um, you know, at that time. So is that what you're, is that how it's gonna work or? So I, I believe it would be a mixture of both. Okay. So beginning with your, um, the latter question, if we have clinicians that have students um, scheduled and it's really up to the psychologist on what they put in the written, written order, stay home is very, very chaotic, you know, for the student and that's not a safe space, but school is a safe space we're able to get the psychologist to write that mobile therapy sessions can occur in school. And if we're able to be given a classroom or a closet or whatever, you know, all we need is a table and a chair um, in order for the child to be able to have services. And we can, you know, have an isolated day where a licensed clinician from Evolve comes out to a particular school. 
in regards to the main referral source, um, what I've been experiencing towards the end of the school year, because like I stated, we started in April, typically the guidance counselors have been the ones that reach out to us. So say if you're having um, an issue or you're concerned with a, a student that's in your classroom, you would then reach out to the parent and the guidance counselor and say, hey, we have this referral source and this is what they're able to do. Then they would get in contact with us. So the same way we wanna be a bridge for you guys, you will also be a bridge for us connecting the school, well, the parent to us. And my last question. I it's promise. okay, it's okay. Do you, I saw, on, I think I saw it on your uh, PowerPoints. Do you do ABA services? or you don't? So uh, we do not, I do, I am an assistant um, BCBA, okay. but because of the criteria, we do not do B, um, ABA services, but we do do <coughs> indiv individualized services. And if we feel as though a kid is more intense and may need um, ABA services, we would just refer, out, we would refer out. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hello ladies, I have a few questions that I wanted to ask. Um, what is um, uh, your average um, experience uh, staff member as far as um, B BCSs or M uh, mobile, um, not mobile, um, MT MT mobile not therapy. MTs, um, yeah. mental health, um, the, the behavior therapist, the one on one? Yeah, the, okay. so you, oh, the so BHT, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I acronyms. I know, so many acronyms, right? Acronyms are, thrown, are all over the place. Uh, what is the average amount of experience for those um, individuals, for those people? So we try to look for, for a BHT, we really want someone that's a little bit more seasoned. Mm -hmm. So we know we have people that come in that may have the credentials, but we actually take experience over credentials for lack of better um, terminology. Mm -hmm. We look for two to three years worth of um, experience. Okay. So for myself, I've been in the mental health field since 2007, and I started as a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So I think that is one great um, part of my journey is that I've done every single role in IBHS. So I know exactly how it's supposed to look and what it takes to get done. Okay, great. Um, and then for your, um, your uh, BCSs, are they all, um, in order to be a BCS for your uh, organization, they have to be certified? So uh, are you state. saying the behavior consultant? Yes, yes, Okay, sorry. so the behavior consultant is a master level clinician. Mm -hmm. So um, in the state right now, it's recommended that everyone is licensed. So what the license actually does is it gives you an extra criteria in order to work with children on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So our um, BSCs, well that's the old term, but the BCs, they are licensed to work with children with autism. Okay. So you need your master's um, degree mm -hmm. as well as this other certification. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I know a, a few individuals um, personally who had to go through that journey. So yeah. yes, it's very, <laughs> it's definitely a very, in, very intense. Um, and then my final question is um, in regards to the um, behavior t health technicians, um, do they work with more than one um, child at a time or they just assign one child um, per, they're assigned one child and then when that child has um, reached their potential and they can um, uh, extract themselves from them, then get reassigned or are they working with multiple children at the same time? So I think the best way for me to explain it is to say, say you come into our office mm -hmm. and your son is Johnny and Johnny's having some issues at school that require a little bit more assistance and more time than what the teacher has. So our psychologist will recommend the hours between like 25 to 30 hours depending on the school day for the support. So that BHT will just work with Johnny at mm -hmm. school and no other student. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if the parent has difficulties at home, then the BHT will also meet with Johnny in the home to provide support to the parent in order to transfer skills. I see, okay, so um, they wouldn't be a scenario where um, they would work at, uh, they would work with Johnny at Callen, and then when Johnny comes home, but maybe only two or three times a week, and then go work with Sally, who's up at Reeseville for two to three, or two days a week, or something like that. It really would depend on the caseload, so okay. it would be hard for a BHT to do that if they had 30 hours with mm -hmm. one kid. 
So let's say mornings are just the difficulty with a student and the insurance company says we're going to cover morning hours and it's 15 hours. Mm -hmm. That BHT may just be with him in the morning, but then there may be another kid who requires support in the afternoon and that BHT is looking for a 30, 40 hour work week, then they would go meet with that other student, but it wouldn't take from each one. Both hours, both settings will be fulfilled with the hours. Okay. Great, and I, you probably said this before, um, and I and I may have missed it, um, but I'm, I'm just going to ask again. So, um, what what do you feel um, sets you guys apart from, say, some of the other um, agencies that we have in um, our district who have come in? So, like uh, CCRES or uh, CCRN, uh, you know, those um, those agencies have have uh, worked with students of ours. So what I want to uh, know is what, what sets you guys apart from them? So I think um, without saying, we look like the students <laughs> at Coatesville Area School District, <laughs> for lack of better words. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and we were both born and raised in Coatesville. Mm -hmm. We both grew up on First Avenue. We both went to Rainbow. She right. went to Gordon. I went to South. Um, we played basketball here. Some went further than others over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and both very good students. <laughs> but, but we have a heart for the community. And I think sometimes when you're, fi when you're placed in this field, because I don't really think you choose this field, it's kind of something that sneaks up on you because it is very difficult. Mm -hmm. You have to have a heart for the members that you're working with. And if you don't understand, okay, well, this student's not going to school and putting their head down because they want to be non-compliant, mom works overnight. So this student has to stay up and get, and get the brothers and sisters dressed. Or mom is not concerned with grades because they're worried about an income mm -hmm. and someone helping support, you know, in the house. So just understanding the dynamics of our community and we're already established in other ways I feel like it builds for a better bridge, to be honest with you guys, because we do have the trust mm -hmm. of the community, whereas though the trust may not be there right now, mm -hmm. you know, with the school district. So if community members see that, th that, that we're working with you guys and you guys are working with us, they may be more inclined to enroll their child in mental health services and not feel like their child is being labeled. I, I, I just um, thank you for answering my questions. I just love the idea of um, a Coatesville based um, group working with our students and I just absolutely love it. Um, great presentation. Thank you very much. Thank for answering you. My no questions. problem. Did anyone else have any questions? Oh, I don't know how I could follow this. Do you have anything, <laughs> Rick? <laughs> I just have one, one question. I know that we, we had met. Brenda, could you explain kind of <coughs> <coughs> how the control, um, communication, and coordination would work with our staff and the agency? So it would very much work. Oh. It would very much work like, um, like we work with Devereaux, actually uh, through our staff team. We contact Devro at that point, and then they reach out and they contact other agencies and supports. Um, with Evolve, we can contact them directly. So we would look at those students that will be identified. You know, we're, we're working on our early warning system, and we will find those students that need additional support. And through those, su those needs, then we can make referrals ourselves and um, through Devro and through Evolve um, to, to get them the outside supports. I have to say that I'm very thankful for the phone call and the contact that we received from um, Ms. Bar Marlowe and Ms. Baxter um, telling us how much they wanted to work with the district and what they could provide for us um, and helping us to create that school to home connection and, and work with us within the community as well. It's something that we were sorely needing and um, I thank you for stepping up to help us to fill that gap. Very impressive young ladies, very impressive. <laughs> Thank you for the presentation. Um, Ms. Mills, if I may, just, sure. just very quickly. Ladies, thank you for having the desire to want to give back to your school and give back to your community. Thank you.
Okay, moving on to agenda items. A, North Brandywine Middle School field trip. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the field trip <laughs> agreement with Reading Royals in the amount of $3,900 for North Brandywine Middle School as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second, Mary? Second. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. And yes. B, Albright College Affiliation Agreement, recommended action, pending legal review, that the Board of School Directors approve the affiliation agreement with Albright College, which outlines the expectations for educational experiences for Albright students as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. And yes. C, Student Programming Agreement, OASD, recommended action, pending legal review that the Board of School Directors approve the agreement with Octorora Area School District to allow Coatesville Area School District students to participate in OASD's Homeland Security Law Enforcement Firefighting and Related Protective Services Program as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. D, Independent Contractor Contract Camp Hill School. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the Independent Contractor Contract with the Camp Hill School for students 1-0-0-0-5-2-8-0, and 1-0-0-0-8-3-0-0 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. And yes. E, Itai Gans, MD, Team Physician and Medical Services Agreement. Recommended action pending legal review that the Board of School Directors approve the Team Physician Agreement with Itai Gans, MD, and the Medical Service Agreement with Premier Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Limited for a one-year term from August 1st, 2022 to July 31st, 2023. Dr. Gans will help supervise the certified athletic trainers at Coastal Area Senior High School at a cost of $200 per event as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. Yes, and I apologize if I messed up that name. Um, informational items. <laughs> A, EBS Stepping Stones Group. So this evening, um, we just really wanted to have a, a just brief conversation about what will be coming for the next board meeting. Um, I will have a contract from EBS, which is now called Stepping Stones, um, which will outline the services that they provide and um, be similar to the contract that we've had with them for the past few years. Um, there, of course, there will be a few increases in the contract, um, which is what we're seeing with every place and the services that we're um, contracting for students in terms of um, paraprofessionals, one-on-ones, and things like that. Um, I will have a, they will have a presentation for you to further explain their services and, and tell you what all of those letters and things mean and how that relates and how that functions within our schools. So generally, because I, I saw the contract, there's a long list of the types mm -hmm. of personnel that they provided to us and have been providing to us over the years, about five years. Something it's like been that. a number of years, yes. A number of years. <laughs> okay. Now they're bought by another company. They're going to continue to provide the services that focus mainly on behavior. Behavior. Yes. Now, I, I will say that we added to the contract last year to give us the opportunity if we needed to look at other positions in the district, um, like guidance counselors, special ed teachers, um, other, other personnel that maybe we couldn't contract through other places or we couldn't hire. Um, so we did have that added to the menu. Um, okay. last year. That doesn't mean we have people.
that are filling those positions. It's primarily behavioral positions that are being filled. So they may stay on the menu, but we may not fill Correct. them because we don't need them. Correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Becky? Yeah. Becky's good. So just to reiterate, we will be having a presentation at the end of the month board meeting. Okay. Um, during the special presentation section of the agenda on EBS stepping funds as to what positions well, we, we currently have, what are filled, what are, and how that organization supports us. Okay, that's very important. Thank you. We look forward to that. You're welcome. Okay, any old business? New business? Under new business, I see data dashboard discussion. So um, we have been talking within our committees, and tonight's the meeting of committees, each one of us, has been talking with the administration representatives that supports that committee on informational items that we believe are very important to the public and should be made available on the website for the public um, to view. So in the area of the education committee, it, both education and uh, pupil services, so some of the things we've talked about is uh, there would be a link on this data dashboard in the grouping for the education committee for th <coughs> excuse me, things like um, the, the uh, results of PSSA, results of Keystone, the Acadians testing, um, and other items like that. I believe, I believe you also, I apologize ahead, for sure. interrupting, but I believe you also discussed things that <coughs> relate to the comprehensive plan that center around education and pupil services so that we can look at attendance data Correct. or behavioral data uh, that people may be concerned with and as it affects the goals as well as the strategies that are in the uh, comprehensive plan Correct. to we be were able to put out to the public. We were asking, and, and the, because the, this is a lot of work and what we're doing is we're going to start with some areas and then build on it, but you are correct. Attendance is a problem. We have heard that from <coughs> the teachers and from administrators. So watching <coughs> attendance and, and um, putting in things to uh, help the attendance problem, we'll be able to watch this and hopefully see attendance fruit because if the kids don't come to school, they don't learn. And, and that's a big deal. Um, there's other areas in the comprehensive plan we'll be touching, um, but, but I know it's a long list. And as we go through the beginning of the year, we're going to look to start to be able to put some of this information out publicly. Not that all of it is, is going to be there. We're going to continue to process through right. as, as we look at the work that we're doing to be able to have that information for the public. Because you come and ask for it. So we're going to just get it out there for you. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, that was our new business, the data dashboard. Oh, do I have any public comment for education tonight? Thank you. Lori Shannon Bailey. Good evening. Um, thank you for the information on the data dashboard. Um, I, I, th I still don't think it takes the place of the um, the public meetings that we used to have under um, the the prior before the prior um, the last um, superintendent. Uh, there's something to be said about a group of people gathering together to talk about and listen to. Um, uh, information about our school district um, but it's better than nothing and when we when the community comes to stand before you we don't always know what questions to ask for um, so in conjunction to the comment <coughs> about the data dashboard will the safe school report be on that dashboard is the one question that I would have um, and I would like to get an answer to that please at some point um, I was really impressed with the presentation from Evolve. I did hear someone say, or one of the presenters say, all they needed was a closet uh, for a minute there. I got kind of nervous because I heard teachers were teaching from a closet when the um, 
the lawsuit hearings were happening in Harrisburg. So I'm pretty sure with all the taxpayer dollars that we're paying, we can do better than a closet. Um, but I also was very impressed with the fact that um, the owners of the organization look like a lot of our students. And I have said over and over again that we need more staff and administrators that look like a lot of our students. And I understand that not of all, all of our students are African American. But um, I've been yelled at from one of the administrators here when I've said that we need to do we need to do more um, in uh, hiring more administrators that are um, African American or now I'm saying Hispanic. So um, so uh, I will be watching. Um, I didn't hear anything about cost. Um, so I'd like to know wh when uh, the district would be making a decision about that. I'd like to know what the cost involved is. If you could please put that information um, in the agenda when you, um, if you vote on it. Um, and then interventions that may be implemented, page eight of the presentation, interventions that may be implemented at the problem stage before more severe dis disorders develop, as you all, uh, as you just said, uh, Board Member Mills, um, we, we know that truancy is chronic and that <coughs> definitely is a problem um, that is severe. Um, so overall, uh, I was very, very impressed with that and, and looking to hear more about it. The program at Octorera, um, I did see some numbers. Are students required to pay for that program? Um, I know that they have to have their own transportation. Um, I did see a big number. I don't know if it was like 10,000, but th I do have the report it here. Is, it is 10,000, and it's just like the same program for TCHS. So do we pay for that or the not? I mean, I don't, for it. I'm sorry? The district, the district budgets okay. for X amount of students. Okay. There haven't been any students in that program since 2019-20, and there was one student who registered for it for this year. For, for, for which program? I'm sorry, the one Dr. you're talking Bay. about. Okay, so one student so far. Okay. So how are we getting the word out? I mean, is this the first, I mean, how do we? It's in the course selection guide every year. There was never, okay. there was never a formal contract agreement. Okay. And that's why that was created tonight. Okay, okay. Well, it's a great program. Um, I, I'll certainly do my part to help get the word out. Thank you very much. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, and I adjourn okay. Education Committee at 6.35. I'd like to call to order the Finance Committee meeting. Ms. Mills, before we get started, yes. in the absence of Mr. Finkbonner tonight, I will uh, um, sit in his seat okay, on the committee. Okay, you can sit in. Thank you. We're a little slim tonight, it's the summertime. Um, thank you for that. Call to order the meeting. Okay, first thing is the approval of the minutes. Recommended action approval of the July 12, 2022 Finance Committee meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. Financial statements. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the financial statements bills payable list as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 B. Appointment of Open Records Officer Pamela Kiley. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors appoint Pamela Kiley, Assistant Business Manager as the school director's open records officer, effective August 10th, 2022, as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Ms. Mills, before yes. we um, take the vote, it might, it might behoove uh, Dr. Dunlap just to give a brief explanation of a school district's open record officer, if you could please, just for the public's knowledge. So we have to have, uh, uh, under the law, uh, an open records officer that's appointed yes. to actually deal with records that are sent out and um, cataloged and organized. And uh, our previous assistant business managers have always uh, fall, uh, fallen into this role uh, to support the business manager uh, as an open records officer. Um, Pam Kiley became our assistant business manager last month and uh, with Dolores leaving and, and Michelle Kelly leaving prior to that, Pam will assume <coughs> that role. Thank you. Okay. Call for the vote. Yes. And yes. <coughs> C, CCIU 2022-2023 IDEA B Section 
six one nine original and a r p allocations use of funds agreement recommended action that the board of school directors approved the twenty twenty two twenty twenty three individuals with disabilities education act part b i d e a b section six one nine original and a r p allocations use of funds agreement between the chester county intermediate unit c t i u and the school district as presented do i have a motion second call for the vote yes yes d creation of accounting supervisor in the business department recommended action that the board of school directors approve the creation of one accounting supervisor position to support the restructuring of accounting duties within the business department for the coastal area school district as presented do i have a motion motion second call for the vote yes uh, Ms. Mills, before I before I give you my vote, um, again, I, I think it's important that we highlight that this is a part of the restructuring of the accounting duties, and then accounting duties are not a new position. So therefore, my vote is yes. Okay, thank you, and yes. E, Educational Consultant Support Services, Cheryl Newton <coughs> Woods. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve an agreement for Cheryl Newton Woods to provide educational consultant service support services to the town elementary school through the existing agreement for services with crest at the cost of six hundred five dollars per day as presented do i have a motion motion second do you want to explain that one for yes. us dr dunbeck so uh cheryl newton woods was a former um superintendent also a very successful elementary school principal <coughs> Uh, she's going to be coming in to Cal Elementary School next week. We have our final round of interviews with four final candidates uh, scheduled for this week. Uh, we'll be making a decision on the principal for that school and bringing them to the board, uh, hopefully at the end of the month. Um, depending upon which candidate is hired, we have good experience, a number of different release dates uh, where we might be able to start immediately or we might um, have to wait for 60 days. Um, Cheryl will be with us uh, during that time um, to be able to um, get Cowan Elementary School up off the ground uh, running and, and provide the teachers and students with administrative support. Um, also in the next agenda item, um, we are a little short staffed at the high school with uh, uh, Ms. Snyder being out and um, Mr. Culp uh, uh, has, is, is working as the interim principal. So for the start of the school year, uh, we're gonna bring in an assistant uh, to help out. Uh, a little bit different structure. They are on a <coughs> hourly basis versus a contracted uh, daily basis. <coughs> so those two items are there to be able to help us open up school with that administrative support. Both of those salaries are coming out of the existing uh, salary position uh, from the money that we are saving right now at Count Elementary School. Okay. Hence the timing of one being hourly, uh, only being here for the month of September, uh, and then however long uh, Cheryl would be with us. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 F, Educational Consultant Support Services, Dr. William W. Bailey III, Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve an agreement for Dr. William W. Bailey III to provide educational consultant support services to Coatesville Area Senior High School through the existing agreement for services with Crest at an hourly rate of $55 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Substitute Teacher Service, Inc. Second addendum to agreement. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the second addendum to the agreement with the Substitute Teacher Service, Inc. to continue the pay rate for a substitute teacher at, at $155 per day and for a building substitute at $170 per day, effective with the 2022-2023 school year as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments on this one? Dr. Dunlap, I do believe that that puts us pretty competitive with some other school districts within the county, correct? 
It does, except for Harrisburg. <laughs> Don't I know? <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, Harrisburg is offering $350 a day for a substitute teacher. So. It's crazy. Yep. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 H, Human Resources Report. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the resignations, appointments, new positions, leaves of absence, transfers, change of status, and corrections as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 I, Human Resources Report Addendum. That the recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the resignations, appointments, new positions, leaves of absence, transfers, changes of status, and corrections as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 J, Human Resources Report, second addendum. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the resignations, appointments, new positions, leaves of absence, transfers, changes of status, and corrections as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. Ms. Mills, before, if sure. I may, before we move on to informational items, I'd just like to take a moment to uh, thank Ms. Heindel and her staff in our Human Resources Office. Uh, <coughs> July and August are always, always a very busy, busy time of the year for school districts with hirings and, 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 and the such. And uh, um, that department has worked tirelessly um, over the last month or so with interviews and uh, um, checking references and all the above. So Ms. Heindel, thank you and thank you to your staff for um, extremely uh, difficult time for, you, for your department, but thank you. Mr. Fisher, thank you for giving that shout out. I also echo those same uh, statements that you made about that department. Um, Hence, today you'll see a second addendum for a human resource report. Um, again, the, they're, they're working around the clock weekends um, trying to fill our vacancies. Uh, we are competing against all the other school districts. Just a, an, an interesting clarification here. You know, back in 2013, there were around 17,000 teachers that were certified in the Commonwealth. Last year, there were less than 6,000. So we are competing with every school district um, to get staff. Uh, there are some uh, areas that we're concerned about, and we have a number of contingency plans that we're looking to be able to uh, staff our positions so that we're able to support all of our students. <coughs> it, it will come down to the wire. We have some deadlines next week of when we're going to make decisions about special education positions that we may not be able to fill. We have been regrouping students uh, to take care of uh, their needs. Uh, and we also have a deadline of next Friday to take a look at our elementary numbers um, to be able to then uh, maybe have to move some staff around to support areas where there is an increase in students. Um, and, and that's a good thing, uh, but being able to have to shift some staff to be able to accommodate that. And through her department and pupil services and the educational service services department, we're working hard trying to staff those positions and fill those vacancies. You can tell when you go in the building, there's lots of activity in the admin building. It actually buzzes. Okay, thank you. You did great. Any information, that was any new other informational items? Old business, any old business? New business? Can we talk a little bit about the da dashboard discussion uh, going forward what, what we're looking at uh, with finance. So we, w we've been looking at the um, types of information that we get regularly requested from the public and we thought we'll just put it out there on the day data dashboard. Um, the ESSER, how much money that we've spent on the grant to date would be one of the areas. We've talked about um, how much money we spent for legal. People ask about that. Um, the um, other grants that we're getting. Go ahead. Transportation. Go ahead. We're talking about transportation, um, medical, our medical claims. We're going to be talking about that or including that in our dashboard. Various areas 
really tied to legal, just breaking it down a little bit more um, based on like our right to know, our settlements, just giving more detail on the legal breakdown as to what the, what's costing the district. Um, some of that we'll share quarterly, some will be monthly, some will be once a year, but that's, that's part of the data dashboard that we're going to be providing. Thank you. Do we have any public comment? Lori Shannon Bay. <coughs> people watching could not hear me. Uh, so I'm a little bit paranoid. Um, my first question is um, for- Ms. Shannon Bailey, can, can you stop the clock for one second? Yeah. Please don't feel paranoid. I know that last month when we met, there was concern over an area that wasn't taped. And I'm just gonna have this conversation with you publicly. Was it explained to you as to what happened? It was uh, briefly expla explained to me by the, um, by the community member who brought it to your attention. However, um, Was there follow-up from that community member to you? No, no, Dr. Dunlap, but it's okay, and I don't want to waste my three minutes. I stopped the clock. Oh, okay, well, that's fine, um, but I, I- Just let me explain what happened. Okay, you and he both signed up for discussion at committee meeting. <coughs> that night there was no public comment at the end of the night special board meeting. Your comments were recorded during the times that you spoke. The gentleman was confused. What did happen that night beyond our control during the special board meeting was because this is live streamed out on YouTube, there was a glitch on YouTube beyond our control. There was actually a power outage where YouTube shut down and you could see on the report that we pulled from that where that um, user or those that were on watching it, those <laughs> that was a complete drop off where it just went down. And then when it came back up a few minutes later, those folks were back <coughs> on there. That was beyond our control. When we sit down and do the minutes <coughs> to the meeting, Ms. Diefendorfer ends up going through that tape. She could not go through that tape and just make up what was said. But the comment that occurred during the actual committee meeting of which you spoke and that gentleman spoke is where you actually signed up. There were no comments during the special board. Everything was in accordance with what happened that night. There was not any behind the scenes, oh, we're gonna cut people out. That did not <coughs> happen. So please, don't feel paranoid. I appreciate your telling me that, however, uh, it doesn't work. I do feel paranoid, but that's okay. That's my issue. But thank you very much. Um, I have reasons to feel paranoid, so <laughs> it's okay. Um, I want to go to the contract with Miss Carol, uh, Dr. Carol. No, she's not even a doctor, correct? <laughs> uh, I'm reading it's not he in her name. It, uh, Dr. Bailey is, whom I know. Um, so I, I think the public would benefit. I know you spoke about what she's going to be doing. You said she's going to be helping the administration out. Um, she's going to fill in as the uh, interim principal during the time until that principal position okay. is filled. Okay, so at $605 per day, do we know how many days per month she's gonna be working? She's gonna be working through the month of, of September at least. Okay, okay, so it's just a lot of money. She's a former superintendent who has a per diem rate. Understood, just a lot of money when we look at the $55 a day that uh, Dr. Bailey is getting, but I understand it's two different, <laughs> uh, two different positions. Okay, my next question has to do with um, Teacher supplies, um, I, did, I did indicate uh, in my notes, um, support, general, pu general fund support services. Um, so which, where do teacher supplies come from would be my question because there's a lot of Facebook activity for, um, or social media activity for people to donate to Amazon and, and I'm all for that because teachers like their classrooms to be just so. 
Um, but we, need, as taxpayers, we want to make sure that there's enough money in the budget for teachers to get sufficient uh, uh, supplies. I can answer that for you. So every school is allocated a budget, and out of that budget comes the supplies. So like teachers will go to the building administrator, um, let them know what supplies they need, and then they will place the order through their school budget for um, through Amazon or Office Depot or any any of those supply chains they would place the order through there. Okay, so on the condensed board summary support, does that come under general fund instructions? That's, um, how, where would we find it? Th there's like uh, $220,372, where it says general fund non-instruction and general fund instruction. I'm, I'm not sure what you're looking at. Here. Well, I pulled, I pulled information from the um, budget, it, the, it was, I forgot what page, I didn't indicate which page, but I can email you specifically oh, and then you can you. you can tell me about it then. Um, I get, do I have more time? I don't hear any bells and whistles going off, but I think oh. I just <laughs> should have kept my mouth closed. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. You good, Miss Mills? Sorry. I'm any other public comment? Any other public? No, that was the last of the public comment. Okay. Um, moving on to operations. Is Mr. Rome with us? Mr. Rome, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? I, I got you. Listen, I, I think it would be easier uh, for me, since I'm here in person, to chair your committee. If, it's all, if that, that's all right with you, uh, we'll proceed in that manner. Yes, I would actually prefer it that way, sir. Okay, and uh, Ms. Harlan, would you fill in for uh, Mr. Brown? Yes. All right, Ms. Rohn, thank you. First order of business, call to order. Approval of the minutes. Recommend a motion, approval of the July 12, 2022 Operations Committee meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 <laughs> Dr. Dunlap, looks like we have a uh, presentation this yes. evening, so uh, I'll allow you to briefly introduce Mr. Changer and give us a little background. Yes, so uh, Mr. Changer is going to uh, bring forward uh, some representatives uh, from Cleveland Cliffs as well as member of our Coastal Area uh, Education Foundation. Um, Mr. Rob Smith, who is the president of that organization, uh, to talk about an opportunity for the district to go into a partnership uh, with Cleveland Cliffs uh, that may be beneficial to providing some needed support uh, in the athletic department. So I'm going to let Mr. Chenger uh, introduce the team and, uh, and talk with us tonight <coughs> about uh, this proposal. Brian? Test, test, okay. Uh, Mike, I'm not sure if this is working here, the clicker to advance. Gotcha, okay, great. I'll uh, present from the podium if it's okay with the board. Okay, good evening, Dr. Dunlap and Board of School Directors. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity this evening, to share with you an opportunity that has been presented to us through one of our community's largest and oldest employers in Cleveland Cliffs. The information I'm about to share with you this evening is, is one that addresses up to three of our board-approved athletics and co-curricular st activity strategic plan. It also aligns with our mission and vision statements within that same plan. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to introduce a few members of our community and the team that has been having ongoing discussions to continue to develop this initiative. First, uh, Mrs. Amanda Ashby. Uh, Mrs. Ashby is um, the AmeriCorps VISTA, which is a volunteer in service to America, through the Youth Mentoring Partnership, who's assisting us with some of the research and developing of our presentations. Um, she's responsible for most of what you're looking at tonight. 
so that credit does go to Amanda. Um, Amanda is also working to assist us on some of our other goals within our strategic plan, um, such as increasing social media presence, which she has done a phenomenal job in making sure that every team, I think just about every team is represented in social media. Um, strengthening our booster clubs, we continue to meet with our parent groups and, and making sure that um, right now a lot of things happening behind the scenes where booster clubs are, are occurring, um, so we're still laying the foundation for those, but we're looking to advance um, and strengthen our booster clubs. And also, um, as you can see here tonight with uh, a lot of our community relations and tying that to our um, teams and activities. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Rob Smith. Mr. Smith is the president of the Coats for Area Education Foundation who has recently joined us the last few meetings in an effort to not only engage our education foundation, but also to provide insight on the project from his experiences uh, throughout his career. So Mr. Smith is here with us as well. Also, our um, the re the community relations representative from Cleveland Cliffs is here, Ms. Uh, Shelley Hoffman. Um, and unfortunately, Mr. Albert Fuller, the area manager of operations for Cleveland Cliffs, is on vacation this week, so um, he was not able to attend. So what is the ask here tonight? Um, I stand here presenting this information tonight, asking permission for our Coast Ferry School District Education Foundation to follow the process that has been designated by Cleveland Cliffs um, of submitting a letter of inquiry and if invited to do so after that point to then complete the full application, submit the, pr the full proposal. Uh, I, I don't want this to get confused tonight that there's something on the table that is not. This is basically just to hopefully begin the process of bringing this proposal forward in the correct, um, in the correct pathway as designated by Cleveland Cliffs. Um, we did recently learn that there is an upcoming deadline of September 1st of these requests, which leads me to this presentation this evening. And again, I'm not going to read every word for word on this presentation, as I believe you do have it in front of you. Um, so I will just kind of talk through some of the highlights as we go through. As I mentioned earlier, this project directly addresses three goals within our strategic plan. Within goal number one, it's going to um, assist in increasing advertising, promotion, and recognition of our programs and students within. Within that goal, we've already collaborating with local business in Cleveland Cliffs, but also like to help create additional connections throughout our community through advertising opportunities, as well as provide a district with a means to highlight students, employees, and programs in front of thousands of people. Goal two addresses increasing opportunities and more participation. This board will now provide an opportunity to, um, when I say this board, I'm referencing obviously the video board, um, opportunity not only to highlight the opportunities, but also to increase opportunities for students to engage um, that may not be involved in athletics, uh, such as sports marketing, video production, and graphic design, just to list a few. Again, if you, just to highlight that bottom section there, we are um, currently number two in the county for athletics, as, as the uh, Nietzsche ratings, ratings have for us, number seven in the state, and 205 in the U.S. Uh, we do have the county's largest stadium currently, um, actually tied as the largest stadium with Westchester University's Farrell Stadium. And as you all are well aware, um, if you come out, Friday nights or in the spring during our track meets and um, several events that the district is uh, very supportive of our students and our programs. And, and um, I think this video board, um, we can certainly expand upon that, which I'll mention here shortly. Again, as mentioned earlier, the video board um, has much more of an impact just on Friday nights and at large track meets. We'd like to ensure that allows student involvement to assist students pursue college or career pathways within advertising, marketing, and production. Again, you can see the slide here. Um, our current board is 16 years old. Um, 2006 um, was the install of it, so um, it, you know, it is reaching the life expectancy. It's getting to the point where um, it's, it's going to need to be addressed. And again, 
uh, not only will it be state of the art in the most recent technology um, with the sound system, potentially at and, and hopefully at no cost if, if we're able to uh, make this connection with the um, with the higher levels at uh, Cleveland Cliffs and go through the process, then um, the screen itself will, will generate the revenue through sale of ads and um, videos at events at held in the stadium. Again, you can see that that number there. Um, I think the average what we did research on was about 40,000 per year. And again, we know our community, we know our um, alumni and, and how supportive they are. So that would not surprise me one bit if with the right sponsorship opportunities that that, that is, is exceeds that. With our district marketing um, are making great strides to implement systems as I you know, hear Mrs. George um, speak often and speak and, and hear my colleagues with the administrative team talk about uh, such as pos positive behavior support interventions um, also known as PVIS and other methods to recognize what students and employees in the district does well. This will without a doubt support the climate and culture goals within our district and the comprehensive plan as well as increased um, experience for family members, friends, alumni, and students. Um, y you know, I, I, I know um, Mrs. Jones has been trying to plan this, um, our BFG community, one district, one book, book, family movie night. Could you imagine having a video board and having a family movie night in our stadium with tons of space and a, and a beautiful screen for our whole community to enjoy in an educational environment? And again, um, you know, we're talking about career paths. I mean, uh, the opportunities are endless uh, to integrate um, curriculum from the school into um, video production, advertising, marketing. And again, that list can go on and on with this uh, possibility. Again, um, uh, you know, we decide to list some of our large scale events that we currently host. And again, that's just what we have out there now. That is not including and in, in tying in some of the curriculum-based items such as, you know, a movie on BFG or um, other uh, PBS initiatives and to be able to recognize students, again, in front of thousands. And, and don't get me wrong, it's great that the board recognizes students and has that opportunity. Um, and I know we're live streaming right now, but in turning around looking at the crowd here compared to a Friday night football game when you can bring students in front of thousands of people to recognize them, again, it's, it's the memories that will last people a lifetime uh, to do something like that. So why Cleveland, Cleveland Cliffs? Again, at this um, idea and proposal developed over the course of the last few months, the history behind this really brings opportunity to come full circle within our um, community's mill and uh, Cleveland Cliffs. With many of our community members being part of the Coatesville School District as graduates or residents working at this Coatesville location of Cleveland Cliffs, there's a great connection between both organizations, especially during a time that our community and the city of Coatesville and our community is experiencing growth and revitalization. And again, for those who do not know, in 1992, um, at the time it was Lucan's Steel, they did donate all the steel that the stadium is uh, built from. So again, it's a great way to bring it around full circle. Um, and again, just a couple samples. As you can see, again, you know, nothing's locked in stone, but this is um, just an idea of what you can potentially see on our facilities. And it is the um, ongoing trend right now in high school um, environments. I can tell you that there was a great um, video that Mrs. Ashby shared with us, with us today from Tennessee and just talked about how it, it really does connect community to the school. And then um, and there are several other school districts in the area that are looking to go this direction um, as well. Um, again, not that that means anything for us. Um, as, as you know, we are unique and, and, um, and looking forward to doing our own thing because that's what our students deserve. Uh, but again, I thank you in advance for your consideration. Again, I'd like to thank all those included on this slide um, for a countless time that they put into each of these discussions. I would also like to thank the district team of Mr. Jason Playa, Ms. Lori Diefenderfer, Mr. Michael Sobchak for sitting with us at our last meeting for these discuss discussions. And um, I would say that this time I would uh, like to entertain or any of the team would entertain any questions that you may have of this uh, possibility. Again, just knowing that as you saw the motion probably later on the agenda that this is again just to take the very first initial steps in 
this as a consideration, not that this is absolutely happening, but just looking for that permission for Education Foundation to, to do that. So Mr. Changer, at the risk of being redundant, I think it's important to say again, there's a process that has to take place with Cleveland Cliffs, correct? And, and that process is what you are looking for permission for this evening from the board um, to move forward with that process in the hopes that Cleveland Cliffs will consider um, our project and our presentation to them, correct? That is absolutely correct. Again, we could submit the LOI and hear nothing back, and unfortunately that's where that process would stop. If we submit the LOI and we get the invitation to submit the full proposal, then we can do that again by September 1st, and then from there, you know, we may be told no, or we may be told that it's a great idea, we want, to, we want to engage further, and again, that's something that we would absolutely keep Dr. Dunlap and the board abreast of as we move forward in the process. But tonight is just simply the ask to start this process, submit the letter, and, and see um, where we may end up with that. Uh, you mentioned it briefly. I, I also think it's interesting for those who are long enough in the tooth as myself, um, it was the old Luke and Steel uh, mill that um, donated all the steel for the stadium that exists out there now. So that's interesting. But any other questions, Mr. Roan? Any questions from, from your end? No. Mr. Dr. Dunlap. So uh, just looking at your educational component slide um, with your meetings, was there any discussion about linking the resurrection of the Coastal Area High School TV studio pilot program to this? I think it briefly did um, come up. I know in prior meetings it certainly has, just knowing that uh, the CHS is an opportunity to, to tie in and, and really to elevate that program, um, you know, not just resurrect it, but that would certainly be a, a big factor. Dr. Dunlap, I'm glad you asked that question. I was sitting here thinking that exact exact thing and uh, uh, it, it's been a while I believe since that studio has been operational correct it has and m mr. Smith and the, the foundation has procured uh, equipment through a grant that uh, will enable us to resurrect that program so I know that that was all signed off over the summer and I believe that that equipment has already been delivered to the high school so that's great. It's going to start as a pilot this year because it's not in the course selection guide. It'll come back into the course selection guide in the winter. And of course, I, I can surely remember um, what a great opportunity that was for our students. And I see Mr. Polk sitting back there, and he was the uh, teacher responsible for that TV studio, and the, the, the students absolutely loved it. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get that up and running again. Well, I think it would be a great opportunity, especially where the, the, the committee has listed and, and, and discussed about being able to showcase things to the kids that are involved in that program to gather all kinds of uh, stuff to be able to be shared with the community at those kind of events. Right. And at one time, we had a educational channel where the students at the high school um, actually went out and did interviews and segments from all of our schools, uh, elementary on up, and uh, um, it was a uh, something that was very beneficial and very well accepted by the community. So, moving in the right direction. Any other questions? Ms. Harlan, we're good. Mr. Changer, thank you. Ms. Aspie, why I have you here, I don't get to, to see you in person very often, but uh, Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for all that you do for the Football Booster Club. Uh, all of our booster clubs play an important part in supporting our student athletes, and the football boosters have always been one of the strongest. Um, I know and can respect the behind the scenes work that you uh, and the other members of that club do, so we thank you. Mr. Changer, thank you. Moving on to agenda item 4A, 2022 50-yard line tunnel project. Rend recommended motion that the Board of School Directors approve the proposal from the Coatesville Football Booster Club to make cosmetic improvements to the home side 
50 yard line tunnel in the Coatesville Memorial Stadium Red Raider Field as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. motion. Second. Uh, Mr. Changer or, or Dr. Dunlap, um, any insight you can give us on this before we call for the vote? No, just positive uh, motivational uh, work again that the, the boosters on the football team are doing for, for the kids and um, they actually started a project on the one side and this is the kind of finish it up and make it neat. Sorry, I just want to make sure this microphone's on. Um, that's correct. So, um, again, Mrs. Ashby and the Football Booster Club are able to secure services from a, a Coastal graduate and, a, again, just a, a way of beautifying the stadium and, and, and taking that tunnel um, first step in it because I know they have future plans for it as well, but this is just the first step to um, enhancing, enhancing that for our, our student athletes. So, again, thank you, Booster Club. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. Agenda item 4B. T&M Associates Professional Consulting Services for Coastal Intermediate High School Slope Stabilization Project. Recommended motion. That the Board of School Directors approve the Professional Services Agreement proposal with T&M Associates to provide final engineering services and township plan submittals for the Coastal Area Intermediate High School Slope Stabilization Project at a budgetary cost of $4,500 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Uh, Dr. Dunlap, anything specifically? I'm I, just going to ask see Mr. Dan, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Pellegrin if he could just address that. Thank you. board members and the public. Um, this project from TNM Associates is basically the second phase. We already completed the first phase where they reviewed the slope uh, currently behind the intermediate school. The last, I guess it was last year, September, we had a significant rainstorm. That rainstorm allowed water to go into the back end of the intermediate school. Um, the cause of that was basically the slope um, that was originally designed for that section of the back end of the school has basically washed away. So this is the second phase. It provides us with permitting through Cowan Township and uh, allows us to go out to bid with contract. Any questions? Mr. Rohn, you okay? Thanks, Mr. Pellegrin. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pellegrin. Call, call for the vote, please. Yes. 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 Moving on to agenda item 4C, 2022 Kid Raiders Long-Term Agreement. Recommend a motion that the Board of School Directors approve 2022 Kid Raiders Long-Term Agreement as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions? Hearing none, call for the vote. Yes. 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 Agenda item 4D. Preliminary route for all Coastal Area School District public schools. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the preliminary routes for all Coastal Area School District public schools as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Dr. Dunlap, want to weigh in? I, I, I do understand that the key word here is preliminary, but uh, any comments on that? Uh, they're preliminary, but they're also uh, ready to go. Um, fall bus route information will be emailed to all of our families on August 22nd. Uh, our families may see some changes in student uh, bus stop locations, pickups, and drop-off times moving into the new school year. Uh, these adjustments are, have been made to establish safe stops, consolidate stop locations to reduce hazardous and frequent stopping, and limit buses from entering subdivisions to avoid areas that require backing. Uh, parents will be also be given information and a message that I have going out tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, that if they need any transportation changes throughout the school year, uh, they'll be given information on how they can uh, access that to uh, let us know on what changes need to be made. 
uh, Allison Slode and her department has done a great job of consolidating our routes, um, reducing costs uh, with the number of runs that we're doing uh, and being able to provide those services timely. Um, and as I said, as you said, they're preliminary, but they're ready to go. Appreciate the explanation, thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, call for the vote. Yes. 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 Moving on to agenda item 4E, donation and naming rights slash sponsorship, recommended motion that the Board of School Directors approve the request from the Coats Area School District Education Foundation to submit a letter of inquiry to Cleveland Cliffs Foundation and for the Coatsville Area School District Education Foundation to submit a grant proposal if invited to do so by the Cleveland Cliffs Foundation. This opportunity may lead to a possible sponsorship slash naming rights for the Coatesville Memorial Stadium in an effort to support the Coatesville Area School District Athletics and Activities Strategic Plan specifically goals number one and number two. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Uh, and once again, we're, we're, we're following the same procedure here with Cleveland Cliffs. Um, this is just asking permission from the board to <coughs> proceed forward with the procedures necessary. Any other questions? Hearing none, call for the vote. Yes. And yes. Agenda item 4F, fire panel communication upgrades, recommend a motion that the Board of School Directors approve the updated quote from Protection Bureau for two fire panel upgrades at Kings Highway Elementary School and Scott Sixth Grade Center and for four fire, fire panel replacements at Callan Elementary, East Fallowfield Elementary, North Brandywine Middle School, and Reeseville Elementary Schools. Total cost of the project not to exceed $8,502 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Questions, comments? Hearing none, call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. Agenda item 4G, HVAC coil replacement, Coast Area Senior High School locker room RTU-15. Recommended motion that the Board of School Directors approve the quote from Elliott Lewis Corporation through Pennsylvania's Cooperative Purchasing Program, CoStars, contract number 137099 for the replacement of one hot water coil in RTU-15 at the Coatesville Area High School. Total cost not to exceed $12,950 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions for Mr. Pellegrin? Seeing none, call for the vote. Yes. 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 And yes. Agenda item 4H, Transit Facility Management Cleaning and Sanitizing Service. Recommended motion that the Board of School Directors approve the termination of sanitizing services with Transit Facility Management Services in alignment with the current Coatesville Area School District Health and Safety Plan as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Uh, Dr. Dunlap or Mr. Pelligan, a little uh, explanation here might, might help with the public. Uh, Transcend Facilities Management, that, that was the company um, basically that we uh, hired about a year and a half ago, just before the pandemic. They were hired, provided us with approximately nine employees that basically went into the schools and sanitized all the high touch point areas throughout the school on a daily basis. Because things have changed and, and of course, the health and safety plan changed. We want to be in alignment with the health and safety plan, which means that we no longer have to provide that service continuously throughout the day. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. And Thank just, 
just for clarification so that the public doesn't think that cleaning is not happening. Cleaning is still happening. Correct. So, so the cleaning uh, at our elementary schools will be done by uh, campus service group and the cleaning at the high school intermediate and Scott will be done by the coastal area school district employees and custodians. Perfect. Perfect. I just didn't want somebody to walk away thinking when they heard it's no longer needed that we're not, we're not cleaning. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rome. Call for the vote, please. Yes. Yes. And yes. Agenda item J, Cawley Environmental Services, Inc. Oh, I skewed, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Agenda item I, district crisis plan, of all to skip. The recommended motion that the Board of School Directors approve the 2022-2023 Coast Area School District Crisis Management Response Plan as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? I'm just, uh, Mr. Fisher, members of the board and the community, I'm happy to report that um, we actually went through with the entire board a confidential briefing on our district crisis management plan. And we reviewed not only our district plan, but our individual building plans. We also reviewed today uh, with all of the local municipalities uh, those plans. Uh, we met with them for about three hours today, and we talked about supporting our schools uh, and being able to combine uh, and, tr and train together uh, with our students and our staff in the event that we have a crisis in the district. The reason the public does not get to see these plans is because they're confidential because we actually address in these plans our contingencies for different situations that we may face. We don't put that information out publicly for the protection of our students and staff. So I will say that all the board members have reviewed these plans um, and we have um, brought them forward. Um, we have also had 34 of our administrators trained in ALICE training, which is active shooter training. Our administrative team, the, all 34 of those individuals are going to be training our entire staff from teachers to support staff to bus drivers cafeteria workers, maintenance staff, secretarial staff, starting August 22nd, and that training will run through December. On top of that, we also have, uh, besides those scenar the scenar live scenario training and live drills that we'll be doing with our staff, we will also be doing the same thing with students throughout the year. Every time we run a drill that involves students and staff, we will also run a district level incident command system uh, to support our students and staff as they uh, move through these crises and the steps that they have to encounter uh, along and in crisis, uh, any, any crisis, uh, we are going to put the district ICS team in action to train as well. In addition to all of that live training, that's scheduled throughout the course of the year. We are also going to be doing electronic training and you'll see that come up in our policies tonight um, where all of our staff, regardless of the live training that they receive, every one of us is required to complete electronic training. Um, and so um, that is all part of this crisis plan. Uh, and again, I'm excited about the start of the school year um, and our plans moving forward for the district. I also want to give a shout out to Mr. Roan and thank him publicly for his work in enabling us to get this training uh, and being able to turn around and tra retrain our staff uh, it, with this. Thank you. Dr. Dunlap, thank you. And, and ditto Mr. Roan, uh, uh, kudos for taking the time out of your busy schedule, training other districts to come to your home district and. Uh, do what you did for our administrative staff and in turn for our students as uh, that training will trickle down to all staff members. Any other questions for Dr. Dunlap before calling for the vote? Hearing none, call for the vote please. Yes. 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 
Now we'll move on to agenda item J. Cawley, and Cawley Environmental Services, Inc., Coastal Area School District, KH 2022, 2785, 0, CCT, that the Board of School Directors approve the contract with Cawley Environmental Services to provide PH control system correction services for the Kings Highway Elementary School well water system. Project costs not to exceed $29,590.01 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions for Mr. Pellegrin before the vote? Hearing none, call for the vote, please. Yes. 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 We have no informational items tonight, no old business tonight, uh, new business. And uh, Mr. Roan, do you want to uh, chime in on the data dashboard discussion as it relates to the operations committee? Sure. Uh, in an effort to not being redundant, um, uh, same for finance and um, education. Uh, we will be putting the uh, hot ticket items for for quick review uh, for public. Thank you, Dr. Dunlop. Anything to add? We're good. I think we're good. Okay. Public comment. Lori Shannon Bailey. Good evening. Um, so with the report on um, the cliff, the, the renaming of the stadium, uh, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, we don't want to be number, all, all, this, all these accolades about sports. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I do like sports. M my son was pretty good in soccer. Um, he, he didn't do well in college. He, he wasn't motivated, unfortunately. He's probably listening. He's probably not happy about this, but um, we want to be number one in academics. Um, the families that I work with are struggling. Uh, unfortunately, they're struggling in many, many areas. <laughs> Truancy is the main struggle. It's a primary struggle. Um, we want to be number one in academics. We want our PSSA scores to be through the roof up to the, s the stars, the moon, and the planets. Um, with everything that we have going on in this district right now, especially with the, um, the union contract and, and taking care of traumatized children who have gone through the adjudication process, I think that we're, we're doing too much. Um, I think that one of, the, one of the problems with this uh, entire initiative is did, has the community at large been contacted? Have you surveyed the community to see what the community thinks about this? Um, if you haven't, would you consider doing that? I mean, we, we're taxpayers. We have opinions. We have strong opinions. Maybe you'll find that people disagree with me. I doubt it. Um, but please engage the community at large about this initiative with renaming the stadium. Um, and then, and then also, really, let's put more emphasis on sports. I know with the data dashboard, I'm sorry, the discipline, the new changes to discipline. I know that's going to be different in terms of it's going to it's going to make our um, our students partic who are par participating in sports look different. Um, but we we really need we should be focusing more on our academics and in in order to. Um, focus on the value of um, why we want to bring more students back here. It's the academics. It's not sports. Um, so please do consider um, engaging the, s the community at large regarding this situation. I think it would be grounds for a justification for a great survey. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shannon Bailey. If I may, just one comment. Uh, you, you, you mentioned that um, um, attendance is an issue. As a former high school principal, a former teacher, and a former student athlete, a lot of times it's athletics that leads those students to school, all right? Sometimes athletics is the carrot that gets the student to school. So 
I just want to make that comment. And I appreciate that. No, no that. need to comment back. I just wanted to make that comment. That's thank not you. the case for the students that Th I work thank with. Thank you. Miss <laughs> Laren Yako. Um, but can I just ask that we communicate to the entire community that this is being paid with by a sponsor because we have this perception in here that we spend a lot of money when we really don't on sports and I think it's really important to like make that known and it be communicated directly from the district if we can somehow or uh, Amanda should just make something and put it on social media. And then the second thing is, um, I remember a few board members a few months ago asking for technology updates. There wasn't one this month. So um, I've seen a lot of issues with chargers. Um, I'm sure you've gotten emails, but I just wanted to make a public comment about it. Um, but I didn't see, I'd like a technology update, especially since school's starting in less than a month. Great, thanks. Uh, just a quick comment on Chromebooks uh, and technology. They are in the process of being distributed uh, through August 19th. Uh, th the, the dates have started uh, last week and we'll be finishing up at the, at the end of this week. Um, so <coughs> the, te the, tech the technology insurance fee of $40 uh, must be paid via WebTrack. Um, and the one-on-one -on -one Chromebook handbook uh, must be signed before homebook Chromebooks can go home. In the letter that's going out tomorrow night, there will actually be links in that letter for parents to have access to RevTrack and to actually um, receive a copy of the, the, the Chromebook handbook. Uh, they'll be able to link on that click or click onto that link. Um, for households with three or more students, the fee is capped at $100. Uh, and the devices are, are to be picked up at the location where uh, the students are attending school. Um, unfortunately, we're unable to provide devices for distribution at schools where students do not attend. Um, uh, and if there are any issues with um, picking up Chromebooks and chargers, that information is, is in the letter that'll be going home to parents tomorrow night. The chargers, there were a number of chargers that were not returned um, when the Chromebooks were collected. Um, we also had to purchase those. They were um, purchased on July 27th and the delivery date for those was today through the rest of the week. I'm not sure if the delivery came in today or not, but those chargers will be given to students um, when they return to school so they can have access uh, to utilize those Chromebooks. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Dunlap. Dr. Dunlap, I have a quick question. Um, is, do we know if RevTrack is, okay, do we know if RevTrack is functional again? I know the other day it wasn't working and they were collecting cash. Uh, it is functional. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dunlap. And I believe uh, Mrs. Corey Ortega wanted to speak on her operations as well. So thank you for letting me speak, even though I filled out the wrong paper, as told by the donut. <laughs> um, so thank you for letting me speak. I just wanted to come up and say thank you um, to the board for you know, thinking outside the box and letting our volunteers um, bring opportunities to you um, and for you not shutting them down, um, but taking the time to think about them um, as was presented tonight by Mr. Chandler. Um, I also wanted to say thank you to you. I wanted to also say thank you to Cleveland Cliff. Um, when Amanda brought this up at our Booster Club meeting, I was both humbled um, and excited for our district to have this opportunity. It's not just about football, it's not just about our athletes, it's about our community. And what better opportunity to have Cleveland Cliffs, who is the staple of our community, where many of our students leave our schools and go and be 
you know, get employment, um, their parents, their grandparents, many of the people that are in the stands um, supporting us in field hockey, at our graduations, at our musicals, all of those things, many of those people work um, and thrive through Cleveland Cliff. So thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for giving us this opportunity, not that it's going to be done, um, but if you could tell them, <laughs> if they do it, we will make the best of this opportunity. Um, and I think that we would be honored to carry their name with our school. So um, just to reiterate what Laren said, to be sure and to thank Amanda for all her tireless effort. This wasn't done in a month. This doesn't, wasn't done in a week. This was months of her trying to find opportunity for our kids um, and to find those opportunities for free. I'll say nothing is free in life, but you get what I mean. So thank you to her. Thank you to Brian. Thank you to Cleveland Cliffs. Thank you to Rob Smith, um, to Amanda's husband for dealing with all of this, um, and our booster club, and again to the board for letting us, again, think outside the box and trying to do the best for our district. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ortega. Uh, Dr. Dunlap, you wanted to uh, <laughs> weigh in? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to make a comment during the operations committee tonight to just give an update. Um, this too will be going out to parents tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Um, as a result of this insulation and, and uh, mold issue, that is at the Coatesville Area Intermediate Senior High School. Um, and these particular older units, these Airedale HVAC units, um, ECS, which is a company that we have contracted with to eradicate the mold issue at the, at the uh, Intermediate Senior High, uh, they, have, they have performed an assessment all during the week of August 1st. We shut down that system. Um, and we also wanted to confirm that the building air quality was in accordance with ASHRA recommendations and standards. ASHRA, the acronym is A-S-H-R-A-E. That stands for the American Society of uh, Heating, Refrigeration, uh, Air Conditioning Engineers. I got that right. Thank you. Um, and so they were able to, they've been able to do that. During routine scheduled maintenance, um, there was this failure that was observed in our unit. And it was from a, a couple different things as they've <coughs> gone in now to tear this apart and look at it. It is from regulating temperature changes. And this is not a knock on anyone. There have been regulation changes. There are not controls in classrooms. But by not keeping those temperatures at a constant state, anytime you do that, think about it, in your homes, if you have air conditioning, when you turn that air conditioning down, how many of us see water drops on the windows? Anytime you have water that comes in contact where organic material can grow, you will have mold. Um, but there's also more that they have discovered that they are taking care of. In these units, there are these cylinders, kind of in the shape uh, uh, of, an, of an upside down cone, that the air flows up and down. In these older Airedale systems, there are curtains, insulation, that because of that <coughs> moisture, it has gotten into that. And so it's never dry. And that is also what has led to that. The company has, dr has drilled and created, I believe, 47, 42, 47 holes into these systems to put air vents in. And they have removed that insulation, cleaned that mold, and put a protective coating back on so that that mold will not grow back there. We are not finished yet, but this is an update for the parents tomorrow night. Um, so in these HVC units, uh, we've installed access ports at the top of, the, of each unit to allow uh, for entry uh, for the in not only the insulation removal uh, and cleaning, but also for better airflow. Uh, at the completion of each unit cleaning and sanitizing, ECS is providing an inspection of the completed units. We will make that all public when that is complete. Today, the Chester County Health Department came out to inspect the situation at 
uh, the intermediate high. I am glad they came out. Uh, we were actually working together with them to do this in conjunction uh, to be able to provide uh, security for our students and our staff to know that the situation has been taken care of. Uh, so they are monitoring this in conjunction with our environmental team. Today they did an air quality test in the intermediate high school and it was within the normal limit for Asheville. Uh, we will be providing the community more updates as we get closer to the return of students uh, coming to school uh, as well as our staff. Um, I was told today that this should be completed this Friday and again, we will communicate that information out to everyone uh, over the weekend uh, with the condition of the intermediate senior high school. Thank you. Dr. Dunlap, thank you for that uh, very important update. Uh, if there is no other business, it looks like the next meeting is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. And I will call for adjournment at 7.45 or 6. Boy, i got to get my glasses Seven. checked. 7 now. 7.47. I'd like to call, to call to order the policy committee. First item is approval of the minutes. Recommended action, approval of the July 12, 2022 policy committee meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mary second. In an effort to keep the meeting moving, uh, Ms. Harlan, I'll, I'll, I'll chip in, I'll second that. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 There's no presentations. Moving on to agenda item number four, letter A. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors <coughs> review and approve the policy 005 organization as presented, and if approved, to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the August 9th, 2022 special board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Oh, Mary's on. Is she in? Ms. Harris? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we have oh, you. Thank perfect. you. Any questions? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> the, board, the public, um, this is a policy um, under board organization. Um, and if you focus on Article 5, uh, letter G, standing committee, just like there's an education committee, a policy committee, finance uh, personnel, operations committee, uh, this is a um, adjustment to this policy to establish a board disciplinary committee. Uh, this committee would operate, um, and, and you'll see in the, uh, the 005 BOG-2, which is board operating guidelines for this policy on how this committee would work. This committee will handle all disciplinary um, uh, formal hearings uh, going forward. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about um, in that bog how this will work out. This is work that is being done uh, to actually help students in the process. Um, we have heard folks come to the microphone and talk about a student goes to a hearing and then they have to wait for a decision to be made. What this does is it enables the decision to be made by three board members. <coughs> it still has to come to the board for a vote, but in doing so, when that decision is made by the board in that committee at that hearing, based on that decision right then and there, we can render services for students. So this is a change uh, to how we have been operating um, and we'll talk more about that in the next um, uh, bog that's going to come up. But in the policy, we actually had to change this to add a committee and that's what we're doing. Any questions from board members? Seeing none, let's call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter B, 005 BOG 2, Functions of Standing Committees. 
recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the Board Operating Guidelines 005 BOG 2 functions of standing committees as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda and the August 9th, 2022 special board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Dr. Bennett, Dr. Yes, Bennett. so in Article 5 under Discipline Committee, uh, this is what has been an a what has been added to this board operational guideline. Um, letter A, in an expulsion action, the committee will conduct a formal hearing to determine whether a student should be expelled. Letter B, based on the evidence and testimony presented at the formal hearing, the committee will render a decision at the conclusion of the hearing. After the committee's decision, the school board will vote at a public meeting. The majority of the uh, vote of the entire board is required to expel a student. If any decision or discipline imposed by the committee conflicts with the board's decision, the school board's decision controls and the decision or discipline imposed by the committee shall be modified to the extent appropriate to be consistent with the school board's decision. Again, what this allows us to do is once that decision's made, we can then move forward with the student to be able to provide support. If, if a student needs a placement or academic support, we can do it right at the conclusion of that period and not have to wait until it comes to the board for a formal vote. If the board chooses to amend that action, we are still providing educational services for that student in question. Any questions from board members? Thank you, Dr. Dunlap. Let's call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. Moving on to letter three, policy 233, suspension and expulsion. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 233 suspension and expulsion as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the August 9th, 2022 special board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? So this again comes under Article 5, but instead of talking about the discipline committee, it talks <laughs> about the actions of the discipline, discipline committee. Um, for an expulsion hearing. Um, so under Article 5, letter D is added. When a committee of a school board conducts the hearing, the committee shall render a decision at the conclusion of the formal hearing. When a hearing examiner conducts the hearing, the hearing officer shall issue a recommendation to the school board. After the committee's decision or the hearing examiner's recommendation to the school board, the school board shall vote at a public meeting. The majority of the vote of the entire board is required to expel a, a student. Um, and then letter I also is added, if a decision or discipline imposed by a committee conflicts with the school board's decision, the school board's decision controls and the decision or discipline imposed by the committee shall be modified to the extent appropriate to be consistent with the school board's decision. This is coming off of the board operational guidelines as well as the board policy on how it conducts business, it's now reflected in the expulsion and suspension policy. Any questions from board members? Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. so, so the committee of the three board members is making the decision so that we, if a student needs to be placed, that placement can happen immediately okay so then it so now we've placed the student I completely understand that sometimes placement doesn't happen the next day I understand that so let's say the hearing is like the beginning of the month right and we don't have it on our our meeting until two weeks sometimes you can get placement then so if it then comes to the board and we've already placed this student and that student is getting educated, but it comes to the board and the board is, it, it, it doesn't pass. Do, so then does that mean that we are bringing that student back from that placement and that student <coughs> now is going to remain in our district? Or, now I'm really gonna confuse you. No, I'm with you, I'm following. Okay, if, if it was an IEP student, 
and the t IEP team made that decision, would, uh, let me back up, if it's an IEP student, would there be an IEP meeting to say, you know what, we're all in agreement, this student needs to stay where that student is? That's what would happen okay. if the <coughs> team decided, for even if the board reversed the decision, mm -hmm. and that, but that student is being educated, yep, yep. And, and there was a decision to, re to reverse it, if that student was still being educated and it was an appropriate placement that the team felt, mm -hmm. then that student is now still receiving services and does not have to come back. So if it, what if it was not an IEP student? I do know that some students at, Lincoln, at the Lincoln Center do not have IEPs. So if it wasn't a student with an IEP, could the same thing happen? Could, could they stay or come back? Because you look, there are students that have gone to the Lincoln Center that want to remain there, right? So right. we have that opportunity to do that. Okay. The key to this is that we're providing education for students right after the decision's rendered. We're not waiting for it to come to a board action at the end of the month for however long that might be, right? We're still able then to provide students service so that they aren't waiting for that service. Okay, perfect, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, let's call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. Moving on to letter D, policy 237, electronic devices. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 237, electronic devices as presented, and if approved to move forward, that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the August 9th, 2022 special board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments, questions? Yes, there's a change to this policy. Um, with electronic devices, it really centers around cell phone use for students. Um, and so if you look at, uh, I believe it's Article 1, uh, under the policy 1.1 to 1.7, and then under 1.7, 1.71 and 1.72, it gives descriptions and definitions as to what students are able to do with cell phones. Uh, we are we are allowing students on the secondary level, um, elementary level, there's no cell phone. On the secondary level, <coughs> students are allowed to bring cell phones to school. Um, they just can't have them out at certain times. This explains when students can utilize cell phones. There is even a, a clause in here that allows <coughs> teachers to say to students, okay, um, we're gonna take a quiz uh, and we're gonna do it on Kahoot. Take out your cell phone. They can use those cell phones to take that quiz in the classroom. Um, so it gives, it gives latitude for teachers to be able to let students use cell phones, but it also gives administrators uh, and teachers where they're not constantly chasing cell phones and electronic devices in the building uh, during the day. This is going to be covered, these expectations, are going to be covered with students at the opening of school. Um, and so they're in here. So there are a number of, of these. It talks about cell phones being a privilege, not a right, or these electronic devices, uh, and that that privilege may be revoked, that they're not to be able to have those, those devices out to disrupt the school day. This also includes using f uh, electronic devices to record um, and photograph um, certain aspects of things that are happening in school. It's, it's all ex explained in there in 1.1 through 1.72. For the board members, are there any questions about any of those areas um, that I mentioned under Article 1? I, I have a question. So is that going to cover, like, um, instances where, like, people are filming fights and then trying yes. to send them out? Okay. Yes. So it's under 1.7.2. Students may not use electronic devices to photograph, record, or save audio or video of a teacher, classroom, or other students in the classroom, except as part of a specific education program and under the supervision of the teacher, uh, e.g. a student recording the student's own presentation. Thank you. Dr. Dunlap, not a question, just a comment, uh, if I may. 
Uh, like I would say with all policies, uh, particularly with this one though, um, if the board is going to take the time to review, write, and approve policies, um, I can only hope then that they will be enforced and adhered to, um, particularly with this one, because I don't, I don't think it's any secret that it's been a deterrent to education at the secondary level for quite some time now. Mr. Cruz, are these policies and the guidelines for uh, regulations for these policies are expectations for all of us, administrators, teachers, students, and parents. These are the expectations of when students come to school from the time they go to the bus stop in the morning to the time they return home. This includes activities, special functions, athletics, um, evening programs. Uh, it's all part of the expectation. Um, we have gone through our student code of conduct and our discipline matrix. We're gonna continue to do work on that. Uh, we actually put a video together today that's gonna have, uh, our parents are gonna have access to starting Monday. It's gonna be posted on our website as well, which explains the entire disciplinary process, the expectations and rights of all those individuals that I just mentioned. These are the rules on what we are doing here for the safety of everyone. And that is going to be clearly next week. There are meetings with parents to come out to meet with their principals to talk about the code of conduct and the, and the student matrix, uh, to talk about the, the due process procedures for students and to talk about these expectations and uh, responsibilities uh, and we are going to be meeting with students uh, all of these policies that we have been talking about and the changes that we have been made we actually have an administrative review on Thursday with all of our principals so that they will know what policies and what regulations they need to cover with their staff uh, and then in conjunction with their staff be able to address it with their student body of what these expectations are Any other questions? Seeing none, let's call for the vote. Yes. Yes, and yes. Letter E, policy 709, building security. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 709, building security as presented, and if approved to move forward that, that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the August 9th, 2022 special board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, let's call for the vote. Did uh, you I, have I one? I've got absolutely. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's I was right. just getting. I was just getting my bearings. <laughs> so for all these tonight, um, there are changes, and I'm going to. I apologize. I was just That's finding okay. it. Um, so under Article Three. Um, letter. Um, I, Alice training. The change to this policy is Alice training shall be provided as required in policy 805, which we're going to talk about. Okay. Um, I will mention it now. Um, and I already mentioned it earlier when we talked about the crisis plan approval. So we not only have live training, which is required for all staff members, we also have electronic training. This explains the electronic training um, that needs to happen to ensure building security. And the, it's actually defined in the next policy, which is 805 emergency preparedness. Um, and it spells that out. So when we get to that policy, I will go into that in more detail. Um, but it has to be, and again, all these policies are linked uh, in what we're trying to do. So that is the change here for Building Security Policy 709. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, let's call for the vote. Yes. Yes, and yes. Do you want to move on to 805? Can, is, is it okay? Can, are yeah. you okay if we go to 805, Lori, and do the vote there, and then we can come back to, yep. to the other policy? Okay. Um, so, so I guess, go ahead. Yep, I'm you sorry, go ahead, 805. <laughs> so letter G, Policy 805, Emergency Preparedness. 
recommended action that the board of school directors review and approve the policy eight o five emergency preparedness as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the august ninth twenty twenty two special board meeting do i have a motion motion second okay so here's where it's good where we have these policies that are lined up numerically like this because it's easy to get right to the point. In section 3.3, .3, education training, go to 3.3.3.5. This is the change. In addition to the required training under 3.3.3.1 and the training required under 3.3.3.2, all professional employees shall participate in complete ALICE, alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate e-learning training annually. This training will be provided to all professional employees with the knowledge and understanding of how to respond in the event of an emergency on school district property or at a school event. Each year, professional employees who complete this training by April 30th do not have to report for the half day of professional development that is scheduled to take place in May of the same year. Professional employees who do not complete this training on or before April 30th must report to the scheduled half day of professional development in May during which the professional employees must complete the e-learning training. Any questions from board members on that? No. If our teachers and our, all of our staff uh, take the time to do this on their own, and the time that they have to do that e-training, um, we're going to reward them with that afternoon of not having to go through an in-service to do that. Uh, the other piece to this is with uh, the addition of to, as we restructured central office, uh, as the board uh, uh, previously approved um, us to be able to hire a secretary in the um, school security office, um, that person will be responsible for tracking all staff training around security, including the e-learning throughout the year. Okay. Any questions? Seeing none, let's call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. Going back up to policy F, 903, public participation in board meetings. <coughs> This agenda item is for the board to um, discuss this policy of public participation at our board meetings. So I'd like to just take the board through to get your uh, ideas on where the board would like to see this go uh, and have a public discussion on this, on how we sign up and how we comment uh, at our board meetings and not just our board meetings but how do you want to engage the public in our committee meetings as well? This is not something that is going to go on, as Ms. Harlan stated, for uh, any change right now, because it is a process. Not all of our board members are with us tonight, and I know that they also wanted to have some input into this. So to start out, I would like to focus on section 2.2.1, signing up to comment. All individuals wishing to comment shall, prior to the start of the meeting, sign in or on or, si or the sign-in sheet provided and shall include the commenter's name and address, the topic to be addressed, and the group or company affiliated if applicable. Let me make two statements. First, the address should be on the, the comment sheet. Recently, there was a law change. So we should not be requiring community members or anyone to come up to the uh, podium to speak. We should not be requiring them to state their address, but they do need to put their address in the document. Um, to also help with some confusion, it might, it, just as a recommendation or a food for thought, it might be um, we require people who sign up to put a topic of what they're going to discuss. We should re remind folks that that's the topic that they're going to discuss and not use that for something else um, because of that. So again, just uh, where, where we are with, oh, and one other thing. So it came up at the last meeting. I had to do some research on this. The previous 
policy is exactly like our current policy right now. There was not a time limit or, or said that <coughs> all sheets need to be picked up 10 minutes before the meeting. But it was in a policy back in 2012 where there was a time that it stated that everyone had to fill out their comment sheets 10 minutes before the meeting started and they would be collected. That's where that confusion was. And some people didn't realize that that change had actually taken place and were still under the impression that we were gonna collect these 10 minutes before. So I think that that's something that needs to be addressed in this section of the policy. And I'll open that up for board discussion. Dr. Dunlap, I don't, I don't have any problem whatsoever the way um, that we do it now. All I ask is that the policy matches the, our procedures the way, the, the, the way that we do it now. Um, and, and, you know, somebody mentioned that the last meeting was sometimes during a committee meeting through discussion of the board, it creates a question for me. So I, I don't have any problem with um, us continuing the way that we procedurally do business now. I just think it's important that our policy match the way we follow our procedures. Any other comments from board members around about signing up for comment uh, the way that we have that written? I, I think it's fine. Go ahead, go ahead. Go I ahead. think that like what Mr. Fisher said, um, it's fine the way that it is because I, I think as we saw tonight when we were in operations, right, it sparked um, some team members to um, sign up. So I think leaving it like that is, is, is a good thing for our community members. Okay, so uh, go ahead. I, I would say the only exception that, that, that I think needs to be addressed is, and I, and I haven't really seen this happen, um, but people have to, I'm talking about the regular board meetings, not, not the committee meetings. Um, people have to sign up to speak on a topic that's on the agenda beforehand, yeah, yeah. okay? And that's the once, sign up for comment. Once the business meeting starts, um, addressing those items, interrupting the business meeting to address those items. And the only reason I say that is because there is an opportunity to speak at the end of the meeting as well. In other words, once we formally start, our regular school board meetings. Um, at that point in time, who was, because it's early on in the agenda, once that paper comes up, then we, we address those who have signed up, and then unfortunately those who may have missed that will have to wait for their opportunity at the end of the meeting. Still gives everybody an opportunity to speak, <coughs> but it doesn't disrupt the business at hand. So the, the beginning of the meeting sign up is just to comment on items that are on the agenda. Always has been, yep, okay. yep. So we'll make sure that we clarify that. As, as you alluded to, Mr. Fisher, under 2.2.1.3, a second opportunity will be provided during the meeting to sign in in order to comment at the end of the second public comment session of the meeting. Right. That is where. So, so if we're in our meeting and something sparks a concern for somebody in the audience, then they certainly have the right to quietly come to the podium and sign their name and speak at the end. <coughs> one man's opinion. I think also that one of the things that you did say that I think is important is um, the topic. They have to put the topic that they're um, speaking of and stay on that topic. Don't go off on different topics unless you put that down. So I do think that that's important as well. Agreed. Okay, section 2.3.1. The first public comment session of any meeting shall occur before the school board proceeds to consider action items and shall be limited to 30 minutes in length. And, and, and quite honestly, uh, we've, we've never really followed that. So, and, and I don't have a problem continuing, you know, if, if there's that much discussion needed and we need more than 30 minutes, we need more than 30 minutes. So, is it, so, so, so take it out of the policy. So for board members, uh, Again, one to, man's opinion. As we go to edit this, uh, if I could just get some comment from the rest of the board on where you stand with 
uh, redacting that limited to 30 minutes in length from this section of the policy. Yes. Dr. Dunlap, I can tell you, and I, I hate to interrupt. No problem. Um, early on in my administrative career, there were nights where school board meetings went till 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, and they were lined up and down these aisles uh, as far as you could see. Um, so it certainly wasn't followed then. So I, I, I don't, I, again, that's just one man's opinion. I'll, I'll open it up to the rest. No, I think that that is, um, I, I would agree with that. I do know there have been several other districts that have put a limit, that 30 minute limit, and have gotten <coughs> creamed for having that 30 minute limit. So, um, and just like the president just said, I, we haven't ever, you know, needed that. So I'm okay with it no matter what, as long as it's legally authorized. Anybody else? I'm fine with it. Two point three point two, the second pu uh, public comment session. Same thing. Um, it has shall be limited to thirty minutes in length. Strike that as well. Yes, reject yes. that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. And Dr. Dunlap, I know that we are discussing this, and this is not going live um, anytime soon. Um, but possibly when it does go live, for maybe a couple of meetings, we could have it up here so that the community, it, we're, it's not like we're changing it drastically, right. but just so that they understand that this is how it's going to be um, done, you know, moving forward whenever this goes live. So once yeah. once it comes back in a form where that's acceptable to the board and is approved, not only that night will we talk about that, but any time after that for a couple meetings or so, <coughs> we'll have it up there for the, for the public. Perfect. Dr. Dunlap. Yes, sir. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to get to this specifically, but in regards to the time limit, um, I think it may be helpful if we uh, put some sort of either, I don't know if we want to put a countdown on the screen or uh, a little clock, <laughs> um, an electronic clock that faces the uh, speaker um, for their public comment so that they know exactly where they are in their time limit and adjust their comments accordingly so they can stay within those three minutes. So, Mr. Rowan, I was gonna to get to that in, a, in another section that we're gonna hit in a minute. Um, okay, then I'll hold. Uh, and, and we come back to that. Um, so, uh, the next section is 2.6, broadcasting and recording of public <coughs> comment. The school district shall not broadcast the public comment portion of any meeting. The school district shall record the public comment portion of the meeting and such recording shall be preserved in accordance with the school district's record retention policy. That is currently how we do it now. There's no, no change to, to what we currently do by doing that because we don't broadcast that Are you okay with that remaining? Um, yes, yeah. but do me yeah. a favor. Uh, I, I was distracted by some noise somewhere. Can you repeat yes, that again, please? I will. So the school district shall not broadcast the public comment portion of any meeting. The school district shall record the public comment portion of the meeting and such recording shall be preserved in accordance with the school district's record retention policy. It's currently how we do it. So when uh, people come up to speak and there is that live stream, Lori will take that information from that. Um, we are not going out um, and broadcasting right. that as the comment, even though it occurs during the meeting, we are recording that and it's reflected in the minutes. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay, Mr. Rome, we're coming to what you just suggested. Section 2.7.1. Each statement made by the commenter shall be limited to three minutes in duration. The three minutes shall include any time spent receiving answers to questions or engaging in dialogue. Um, first, is there any uh, comment from the board on changing the length of time from three minutes? 
for myself, <coughs> excuse me, for myself personally, um, no need for a change, but respectfully, I would like to say that um, at least during my tenure as president, nobody's ever been cut off in mid-sentence. Um, we've always tried to be respectful enough to allow a person to finish their thought. Any other comments from board members on that? Okay, Mr. Rohn, the question I was going to ask was, and, and again, I'm not being trying to be offensive here, but with what you brought up about some sort of timer, um, would it be offensive if we put some lower, some like type of, I'm just shooting from the hip here, a stoplight system that when they're speaking, it's green, when it gets down to like 30 seconds or 20 seconds, it goes to yellow and then it goes to red, or are we okay with the infamous buzzer that neither uh, Mrs. George nor I can operate? Uh, I, I, I think the, the pr um, I, I don't know if a buzzer, maybe, I think maybe the, the, the stop or the light system. Um, I, my, my point is to what Mr. Fisher said is um, it helps folks get their, understand where they are in the three minutes to get their point done uh, so so that, you know, they don't go over and then it, it, it could potentially, again, I, I, it hasn't become an issue, but I think it will at least help people understand where they are in the time frame. Um, and if they have a point that they're trying to make and they have not gotten to it yet and it's five sentences down, then they need to understand they might need to skip somewhere to get to their 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 home run that they're or the point that they're trying to make or emphasize uh, just knowing where they are in in that three minutes that that was that was the only uh reason for the comment I, I just think it'll help keep folks within that that three minutes to understand where they are uh you know i can't even remember um basically it was like a timer like that that westchester gave because that was years ago so when you get a timer I want to spend money like and like then on the other side do like y yeah to have that way it's not as offensive let's see let's see what or even if it was like digital if they had like a digital something but yeah, right one that's one do they but yeah do they so have things like that i'm sure we could find something so let us look okay. and we can bring that back you don't want to do two things at once no no <laughs> There, there, there are um, small rectangular digital clocks that other districts I've seen use um, that are dual sided so the speaker can see where they are and so can uh, the board secretary. Okay, we will definitely take a look and see what we can come up with. Uh, section 2.7.2, commenters may not cede their time to other persons. Is that something that the board wishes to remain in the policy? Or is that to come so, out? So, so in the policy it says that because I think we need that. We have community members that come up. Like Mr. Fisher will talk, he won't have enough time, and then I will talk to finish what he's saying. So this policy is going to get, this. we can't do that, correct? Right, what this does is it gives both people three minutes or give their time to someone else. You know, they're able to, they're able to do right. that. What's everyone's thoughts on that? So again, yeah, and I know exactly. I know exactly where you're going, and and, and it's happened for many, many years. It's not not just a recent thing. Um, one man's opinion, neither here nor there, to me. I mean, you know, three minutes is three minutes. Um, you use it how you wish, but um, um, again, whatever's in the policy, we we need to follow. If we're going to change it, then we need to follow it. I, Again, one man's opinion. I don't have a problem with three minutes is three minutes. So is that something I we want to strike that. that allows people to cede their time? Right. Or is that something that we want Mr. to keep? Yeah, Mr. Rohn? Uh, I, I, I second that. I, and again, whether it's the same person or, or a next person, three minutes is three minutes. A person may not feel comfortable getting up and speaking and on the microphone and in, in, a, in a large room with people and um, want to yield their time to somebody else who is more comfortable with public speaking. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm fine. So the answer to your question, Dr. Dunlap, unless there's opposition, is yes, strike it. Strike it. Strike it. Strike it. Strike it. 
Now I have a question. Go ahead. Does that mean that if a person has the three minutes and wants to yield his time to somebody else, that person don't get to start a three minute, another three minutes? No, it's three minutes total. Okay, because, you know, they didn't. Okay, whatever. Okay. Section 2.7.3. Uh, no commenter may speak more than once in either of the uh, public comment sessions scheduled for the meeting. I don't. I, I would. My personal opinion, I would strike that because you're saying that I could only talk one night, one correct. time tonight. I wouldn't be able to talk and discuss the board, correct? Correct. Or at any other committee meeting, correct? Well, Shannon Bailey, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that's <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I, yeah, I, I, I agree with Miss I agree with Miss Harlan, yeah. Okay. Because you could have you could speak uh, during you know, before the business part and then when the business happens something else could right. you know, prompt you to want to you know, speak at the end. So I say strike it. Strike it. Okay. All right. And I believe that is it. Now the rest of the stuff is in there is just is what we practice. Uh, we could take a deeper look at that the next time. So I will go back, make additions to this draft, and bring it back next month for the board. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wait, hold on. Yeah, 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 wait, one more. Nine, right? Or eight, yes. right? Okay. <laughs> uh, H policy nine ten community engagement. Yes, this is uh, a policy that we have brought before the board twice. Um, we will be re, uh, revising, or not revising, but bringing our community um, engagement group back in in September and meeting with them. And just, I apologize, I just need to find. Can I get my motion How, first? how about we get a motion? Out? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Got carried away there. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors <laughs> review the policy 910 community engagement as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Okay, now back to back. Oh, now I didn't have to go back here and do it. All right. Nine ten. Yep, nine ten. I gotta find the. Uh, here it is. I got it. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna be bringing this policy back before the board. Um, after we meet in September with our community group. And one of the things that we wanna be able to do is uh, revisit this policy in September um, with the community group and then bring it back to the board uh, with some suggestions. One of the things that we wanna do under definition is define the partners and providers and what does that mean? And be able to provide guidelines for those, those partners and providers. Um, we want to be able to define those types of community partnerships uh, and how are these partnerships assigned? How are these partnerships shared? And how can the resources between these different community groups be shared as well? When we look at this policy under guidelines, we want to create a separate AR for this um, that is aligned to this policy um, for the for the approval of community partners. So we wanna actually have a system of how we approve those community partners. I know that's something that the board, uh, when they created this policy, wanted to look at doing. Um, we also wanna be able to create um, expectation packets for our partner groups, as well as uh, some FAQs uh, for those community partners <coughs> to be able to um, move this forward. So they're the kind of things that we're gonna to continue to talk about when we meet, and we will be bringing this policy back before the board um, with some of those su suggested changes uh, by this uh, group of parents and partners that uh, we are affiliated with as a district. We've also increased that number. Um, I believe we were up to 13 last year. That number has increased to where we've done some research uh, for everyone that we partner with. Um, as a group uh, to be able to bring them forward. So they'll also have a, a voice at the table. 
Any questions for board members? This policy is not moving on. There was just an update yeah. tonight. Uh, this is not moving on. Yeah. Yeah. So, go ahead, just because I, I just have a question where it says um, community members must submit to the superintendent's office any communications and questions addressed to the board. Does that, is that to mean that, um, like right now, we get emails all the time from community members. Is that to mean that community members should not be emailing the board members? Well, I mean, if there's something that a group is going to um, participate and support the district, there should be a process that enables that group. Um, I know when the board created this policy. Uh, we did that. It was, um, um, it was last year. At, um, I don't remember. Yeah, it was adopted originally on, on, in, on October 24th of 17. It, it was but in January, Dr. John. I'm sorry to interrupt because it was right when we reorg. So it was, it was in the beginning of um, January when we um, discussed it, pulled it, wanted more information to put into it. And I believe the board wanted um, more uh, insight yeah. and ability yeah. to be part of the decision for community partners. And so they were the things that were amended with this. So if that, if somebody was to come to a board member as a group to be able to provide a service <coughs> or partner with the district, they should then be referred to me so that we could then take them through that process. There are no informational items. There's no old business. New business is the data dashboard discussion. So, are we good? That was my fault, Lloyd. Just to answer the new comment. Okay. That's okay. Sorry. Um, so we discussed um, at our committee meeting for the data dashboard, really for policy, um, we had suggested to possibly have um, school code up on the dashboard so um, the community could understand kind of where our stuff comes from, like we have to follow school code. Um, the other thing that we did was we would have the policies there, how do we, but we were gonna link them, so, right? So right? it's basically a condensed version of our audit yes. to show the status of every policy when it was approved by the board, when it was last reviewed, and then also highlight those policies that were required every year at a certain time that we have to approve each right. year. And then you, then there will be a link, so the community could click on that link and it would take them in directly to that policy that we were talking about. So um, that's what our data dashboard, anything else? Yep. No, and, and I forgot to mention that about the link. So that right now, anybody can go on the board docs and see our policies. Um, but what this does is shows also the status of where those policies are uh, in relation to being reviewed again. Right. Um, uh, and, and, and that, and then if you click on that, we're gonna try to make it work so yeah. there's a link right to the policy and board doc. Yeah, okay. So um, public comment is Lori Shannon Bailey. Um, so the policy committee was removed from this podium, which I'm just um, emphasizing my okay. paranoia so, here. So let me just, she removed it because I'm usually the one who gets it, so she was just preparing to come up. She didn't remove it on purpose. It's just, I'm the one who always comes down and since I'm the chair of policy, mm -hmm. she was just trying to make it easier for myself. And there was nobody signed up, so it wasn't done intentionally, it was just done to kind of help me out. Got it, still paranoid, but that's okay. I'm a big girl. Um, so with all those changes that you all talked about at the beginning of the policy meeting, um, they make me kind of nervous because there are significant changes and I would just encourage you all to please make sure that um, the powers that be are having conversations with um, students, especially at the um, eighth grade center, the nine ten center, so that the students are aware of what those changes are. I'm really worried about communication to students and parents. I'm really worried about parents who don't give a rat's tail about their children um, and how these policies might impact their um, their students. So it just it just sort of weighs on my heart um, because 
you know, it's just important that students know um, what they are going to be having to deal with. Um, and in terms of adjudication, um, I always carried this adjudication with me. Um, it was signed uh, by several, well actually it was never approved by the board. It says date approved blank. Um, a certain board member rec recused um, itself from signing. So I was glad to hear that there are some significant changes being made. I, I don't want to sound pessimistic, but it, it wor I'm worried about what the process is going to look like for students who may or may not be given the process that you all talk about. Um, and I understand that you all are going to enforce policies. Uh, I understand that you're saying that, and, I, and all I can do is just hope and pray that it happens. But when it comes to enforcement, we, we, can't, we, we have no control over you all enforcing policies. There's nothing we can do. We can't shake you all and say, do this and do that. That's up to you all. Um, but I just, I just, all we can do is just depend upon what you say and, and, uh, and, and hope that this situation is how you explain it in terms of all the comments that you made in terms of the changes that are going to be made uh, regarding these policies because they are significant changes. Um, thank you. Thank you. Our next meeting is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, and I will call for adjournment at 837. I would like to call to order the Coast Area School District Special School Board meeting for August 9th, 2022. Agenda item 1B, purpose of the meeting. The purpose of the meeting is to approve the bills payable and any other matters that may come before the board. Agenda item 1C, reading of the mission statement. The mission statement of the Coatesville Area School District, rich in diversity and committed to excellence, is to create innovative educational experiences which are funded by the taxpayers, supported by the community, delivered by dedicated teachers and administrators to ensure all students will become responsible, contributing global citizens. Agenda item 1D, advisement. By notice of the president, board members are advised that all votes shall be regarded as roll call votes. The minute should also note that public notice was given for this meeting in accordance with Act 93 of 1998, Section 1, school board meetings shall proceed in accordance with school board policy. Madam Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Rob Fisher. Here. Brandon Roan. Present. Holly Charette. Here. Harvell Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown is to be excused this evening. Andrew Finkbonner. Mr. Finkbonner is to be excused this evening. Becky Harlan. Here. Mary Ann Harris. Here. Amelia Mills. Here. Jennifer Scott. Here. At this time, if we could all stand for a moment of silence and a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda item two, to my colleagues, are there any additions, deletions, or modifications to this evening's agenda? Looking for any additions, deletions, or modifications to the agenda this evening. Seeing and hearing none, we will move on to agenda item 3A, public comment on agenda items. The board has requested all persons making comments on agenda items to list their name, address, telephone number, and motion items on the sheet provided. There is a three-minute time limit per person. The board does not take action or discuss items not appearing on the agenda. The board values public comments and wishes to convey that although board members cannot discuss items that are not on the agenda. They listen carefully and appreciate and value input from the public. Ms. Shannon Bailey. Um, so the legal fees total about $69,000. Uh, just a reminder, um, hopefully we 
we won't have as much as we had last year. I don't know what that number is, but um, legal fees certainly does take a big amount out of our tax dollars, which could go to um, this wonderful mental health program that we heard about tonight, um, which I'm sure will not be free to taxpayers. Um, the program about the stadium, um, I did hear something about a grant, so is that not going to be any cost at all to the taxpayers? If that's the case, that's a wonderful thing. I certainly did not mean to um, make any negative comments about that, but if it's not going to be uh, any expenses to the taxpayers, that certainly is um, much appreciated. Um, and at this point, I guess that's all I need to say right now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shannon Bailey. <coughs> Moving on to agenda item 4A, adoption of consent agenda. Recommend a motion that the Board of School Directors approve the consent agenda items. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Committee meeting action items considered routine will be enacted under one motion unless removed for separate action upon board request. The purpose of this consolidated motion is to expedite governing board action on all consent items which are not held for discussion. Items that have been held for discussion by the governing board will be enacted upon at the time the item is discussed. This evening, I would like to remove from consent agenda under number five, finance committee, letter A, financial statements, and letters H, I, and J, human resources report and the two ad addendums that follow. Are there any other items to be removed from consent agenda this evening? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, call for the vote, please. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Holly Charette? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Motion approved. <clears throat> Ms. Mills, in the event of your double duty earlier, I'll be more than happy to read the items removed from consent agenda for finance committee. Sure. So we'll start with agenda item A, financial statements. Recommend a motion that the Board of School Directors approve the financial statements bills payable list as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Questions or concerns? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, call for the vote, please. Becky Harlan? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Holly Sharef? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item 5H, Human Resources Report. Recommended motion that the Board of School Directors approve the resignations, appointments, new positions, leaves of absence, transfers, changes of status, and corrections as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, call for the vote, please. Holly Sharep? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Motion approved. <clears throat> Agenda item 5I, Human Resources Report Addendum. Recommended motion that the Board of School Directors approve the resignations, appointments, new positions, leaves of absence, transfers, Changes of status and corrections as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, call for the vote, please. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Holly Sharef? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item 5J, Human Resources Report, second ad addendum. Recommend a motion that the Board of School Directors approve the resignations, appointments, new positions, leaves of absence, transfers, changes of status, and, cor and corrections as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Again, any questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, call for the vote, please. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Holly Sharef? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Motion approved. And I believe that takes care of all the 
agenda items removed from consent agenda. So we will move on to agenda item number 9A, public comment. The board has requested that all persons making comments of public concern to list their name, address, telephone number, and topics on the sheet provided. There is a three minute time limit per person. <coughs> Uh, good evening. Uh, first off, I'd like to say thanks for the shout out, Mr. Fisher. I appreciate that with the WCHS, but I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge uh, Mr. Maul, Mr. Norton, Mr. Carlino. I was just following in their footsteps. Um, anyway, my name is Scott Polk and I am the acting president of the Coatesville Area Teachers Association. The purpose of my remarks tonight is to call attention to the fact that the current teacher's contract expired on June 30th of this year. We have been actively negotiating with the board all summer and meet again tomorrow afternoon. I'm happy to say that our negotiation sessions have been cordial and respectful. That said, we still have not come to a tentative agreement. It is imperative that a fair and equitable contract is reached by the start of the school year. I am dismayed to see so many of my colleagues on the human resources reports this summer under the heading of resignations. When we ask these teachers why they are leaving the district, there is a common theme. You guessed it, it is salary. CATA understands the financial plight of the district. We understand because we have lived it. Salary freezes, tuition reimbursement holds, our teachers have done our part year after year. This cannot continue. We need to pay our teachers a competitive wage in order to attract qualified candidates and keep them here. We need to pay our teachers a competitive wage in order to recognize the efforts of our teachers who have been here for 10, 20, 30 years. These teachers are the backbone of our district. They are the teachers who coach, who mentor, who build relationships with our students. I urge the board to continue to work with CATA's negotiations team in order to achieve a fair and equitable contract. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Polk. Ms. Shannon Bailey. Um, so I'm, I have a heavy heart tonight. This is a, this is a very rough week for me, um, dealing with some communication issues with um, the special education staff. Um, I'm afraid I am going to have to submit some um, educators' complaints to Harrisburg. Um, I, I think, I, at least I've tried to communicate to you all that I'm not here because I'm bored or because I'm trying to impress somebody. Um, I take pride and honor in supporting some of the most neediest members of our community and yet I, I get pushback and I'm tired of the pushback. Um, and, and it's wearing me down, quite frankly, and I'm, I'm tired of it. Um, and I don't feel like I'm being listened to at all. Um, so I am communicating with um, um, the PEAL, P-E-A-L-E, -E, I was criticized because I wasn't spelling it right, <laughs> the PEAL Center. Um, who is been who has been very very supportive? Um, um, I am also communicating with a special education advisor uh, who also is very very supportive and listens and is also concerned. Um, but I'm not. I don't feel like I'm getting the support that I need in order to help the families that I'm helping. And these are families that are struggling on many many levels. Um, Truancy is one, and there are others. Single parent is another one. Mental health services, <coughs> the lack of mental health services is a huge problem. Um, and it's just becoming almost unbearable for me. So I'm not going to beg and plead and do whatever I should not have to be doing. I don't know processes for one thing. Um, but I just, I'm just gonna, I'm just telling you all now, I have no other choice but to accept to submit complaints. Um, and I'm gonna continue to do what I do to support these families. And unfortunately, it, there's a divide, and there should not be a divide. We should all be supporting all of these families. And I feel like 
my effort is to these have nots, which is how I was raised, um, the families that are traumatized and traumatized over and over again when they have to go, when their students are, are, are adjudicated and um, not given decisions about when they can start school. And so it's just very, very frustrating. So I have a heavy heart. And, and I hope that one day we can get to a point to where we're all educating students and we, we're all concerned and we're all working together as a team and we're not all focused on these children that have supportive parents who, who, whose children are getting it, but we're all working hard to support those, those children who are struggling on many, many levels. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shannon Bailey. Are there any informational items this evening? <coughs> uh, I do have one, if I may. And uh, this item doesn't directly uh, involve the Coatesville Area School District. However, it does involve some young ladies who uh, attend our school district. Um, don't know how many of you have had a chance to follow, but the ten and under girls softball team from Cowan Little League. Although it's Cowan, there are certainly students on those teams that are from our school district. They most recently won the Pennsylvania State Championship, which is a huge accomplishment, um, but then went on to the Northeast Regionals, um, proceeded to lose, I believe it was their second game in the tournament, uh, and then had to come out of the loser's bracket and won I think it was at least four or five straight games to win the Northeast Regional title. Um, so not only did we have students from our district on that team, um, but one of those, one of their coaches was a mathematics teacher here at the high school, uh, Mr. David Scheller. Um, I tried to contact him today to get a little more specific information, but uh, he must be big time and being on the uh, banquet circuit somewhere. Uh, but on a serious note, um, it's no secret that I support athletics, but there's another example of young ladies who had a great summer playing athletics and developed relationships and friendships that they will never forget. Thank you. Any other informational items? I'll call for a motion for adjournment. Motion. We will adjourn at 8.53.